Welcome to Martini Time. It's a beautiful day here in Blackstone, the center of the world, but then you too are the center of the world. Now the topic of this is, well let me drink my Eucharist here. Ah, it gets my throat going here, gets my mind jazzed up a little bit. The title of this is The Imitation of Christ. Uh, I think that was a book, <laughs> but it. when I watch the, uh, and I hope you've seen it, if not, tune it in, but the speech by Emma Gonzalez, uh, the little the uh, student from Parkland who talked at the march yesterday, the one with the, she looks like a uh, warrior monk. Uh, she looks like a, um, well, shaving your head is a monastic rite. You know, if you're going to be a monk or you or a marine, <laughs> uh, you shave your head. You cut off the world, you see. The hair is the world. Uh, for a woman, it's the, it's the femininity. It's her role in life, you see. So if you cut that off, you basically say, I'm not going to play that role. I have another role. And so what is her role? Well, before uh, the Parkland shooting, she was just a, an anonymous student. Uh, I don't know if she had short haircut then or not. doesn't matter. But now she has become um, uh, something other than just a student. Now, if you listen to her speech, her talk, it wasn't a speech, it was one of the most powerful talks uh, I've heard. And the reason it was so powerful is because she didn't say anything. She talked, and then she stopped talking for six minutes standing before 800,000 people, tears running down her face, and the silence, and the crowd couldn't stand it. There would, there would be, for about a minute, there would be, and then, ah! They tried to chant. It died. The silence held. They tried to, they tried to clap, and it died. The silence held. She held the crowd in suspension. She suspended the noise. She suspended the mind. And the mind kept thinking, oh, noise, noise, I gotta talk. Speak, speak. And the silence held. And the tears came down. And even the uh, stage assistants came over and whispered in her ear, it's time to quit now. And she held. And then her little timer went ding. And she spoke and she said, during that six minutes, 17 people were killed. My, st my friends were killed. So what she did there was bring death to the audience, to the people. And she gave death back in the sense that this silence was like a death. That's what silence is. There's Death is the biggest silence. So if you go to a morgue, I mean, you go to a funeral home, and you stand next to a dead person, you can feel the silence. You can feel the stillness. They just, they just emit stillness, but it's such a deep stillness. There's no answer to it. There's no argument with it. There's no thought with it. It's just this stillness. And out of this stillness came the tears running down her eyes as she stared resolutely, holding the tension, you see, holding the tension between the noise and the silence, you see. That's the tension in our mind. That's why people don't meditate. They don't like the stillness. What do you mean just sit there and not think? What do you mean just sit there and do nothing? You gotta do something, you gotta make some noise, turn the radio, get the TV going, get talking, get some noise going, chitter chatter, yada yada, get it going. Don't have silence. 
Many times when the Buddha was asked a question that had no answer, he would just be silent. Many times the Zen masters, when the monk asked them a question, Master, what is this? would say nothing. He would say nothing. Turns the he turns. So I've got a feeling about this, this, uh, this. Uh, what she did. Uh, it's an amazing feat, to be able to hold six minutes, six minutes of silence, against the pressure of the crowd. Eight hundred thousand minds wanted her to speak. I don't like this silence. I don't like this death. I don't want to go here. But the silence held. The stillness held, you know. So she went willingly. Now this is now I'm getting a little metaphorical now. And this is where uh, you can break Christ or the Buddha or God. You can break them out of the the uh, crystallization. You can break them out of the church. You can break them out of the Bible. You can break them out of the book, out of the sutras. You can break them out of the doctrine, out of the theology, out of the philosophy. You can. You have to break them out and make them living. You see. So how is the how is this an imitation of Christ? Well, I don't know if this was her intention or not. It certainly wasn't her intention. I'm going to be Jesus. No. <laughs> That's not the imitation of Christ. The imitation of Christ is activating the act of Christ. Now, what's the act of Christ? Get my little figure back here. I'm a metaphorical priest, remember? <laughs> this is the mass, right? This, this, this is the wine <laughs> and the bread. I mean, and the you know, this olive is my body. It's this. Uh, this gin is my blood. Uh, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> anyway, this is a, uh, a metaphor, a symbol. So how do you make it living, you see? How do you break him? How do you take him off the cross? How do you, how do you take the nails out? You have to imitate it. You have to imitate Christ. Now that doesn't mean you put on sandals and and walk around imitating Jesus or crowding, you know, saying scriptures, being an expert on the Bible or being a minister or a priest or a pope. No, it's going into silence. It's going into death and coming back. So for six minutes, little Emma Gonzalez went down into death and stood there in the silence of death and took on the suffering of her students, her friends, and all of the friends and students who have been suffering under gun violence. She took it on herself right there and held it for six minutes and cried. She held the suffering willingly. See, now that's the triumph of Christ. When you willingly participate and the suffering of mankind is the Christ. Now Jesus was a historical person. He lived back then. You can say, oh, well, that's Jesus Christ. He's back there. He's safe now. He's in history. <laughs> I don't have to do that. <laughs> or he's in the church and you go to church and you pray to Jesus. And that's it. You don't have to do anything. He, well, Jesus did it for me. I don't have to do anything. He paid my debt. I'm... <laughs> I, I'm free. I don't have to do a damn thing, you see. I don't have to die. I don't have to imitate Christ, you see. I don't have to take the suffering on. I don't have to sit with a friend and take their suffering. I don't have to do that, you see. Somebody did it for me. Free, you see. So Emma stands there and takes on the suffering of 800,000 people and all the suffering of all the students who suffer under the fear of gun violence and who have and, and there's so many now that so many you know there how many 
if you start playing with this, uh, it could be a, a, a huge percentage of the nation that has been touched by gun violence in some way or the other. Somebody you know, somebody they know, some something. It's it's a uh, it's impossible to calculate. How many steps back are you from the suffering of gun violence? You see. So she took it all on and stood there in it for everybody there. You see. And it was so powerful. And she didn't say a thing. She didn't say a thing. And there's really not a whole lot you can say about death. You just can't argue with it. You just can't talk it out of existence. You just can't blot it out. You just can't stop it. But you can sit in it. And so she turned, she gave death back to death. So she was talking, and then she went into the six minutes of death, and then she came out. And she tied it up. And she rolled it up. And she handed it to everybody. This is what we're talking about. This is personal. This is subjective. It's not objective, oh, how many people, seven, you know, objective, that measure it, uh, how many people, the statistics and the, and the strategies and the policy and how many, how many people are going for it and how many are against and how, what's the poll, what's the recent poll on it and what, well, who's going to win and who's going to lose and all the calculation, you see. And so death just blows that away. It doesn't mean anything. And so she braided in the whole, all of these Parkland students, but, but for me, particularly Emma Gonzalez, uh, is doing something a little different. Um, you know, the others are, are, and I was really surprised, I watched it during the day, orators in the making, leaders in the making. We will all, in the years to come, when these people mature and enter into the adult world, there will be videos of their talks. Oh, look, they're running for senator. And they'll play that video. That's where it started. It all came out of death. It all grew out of life, came out of death. And so Emma Gonzalez goes into death, stands there for six minutes brings death to us, the stillness of death. We feel the, oh, I gotta, I gotta talk, I gotta talk, I can't stand it, I can't stand the tension. And death held. And then she came out. And then she tied it up. So one day, I'm sure, we'll see her again. And that clip will be played. So watch it if you can. I'm sure if you, you this Emma Gonzalez speech is all over the internet. I have it on my page. And by the way, all of my talks are to killaminotaur.com. I just passed my year mark, the other uh, 360, three, this is 367, I think. So I've been doing these little uh, uh, martini time uh, talks with you now for a year. And uh, I don't know where they're coming from. I, the, more, the more I do them, the more my surrender. Uh, so I, I relate to what Emma Gonzalez did, because she surrendered. Um, she died on stage. In the sense that you give up your fear, what will people think? Imagine, I'm going to hold 800,000 people in silence, in stillness for six minutes, the longest six minutes in the world, six minutes. And she held them. She held them and cried. Thanks for dropping in.